Hey everyone, the name is Eric Thor and just a few days ago we hit 13,000 subscribers. And you know, because of that I wanted to make a special video. I wanted to make a video about how to become better at dealing with being in the spotlight. How to manage an audience, how to manage when other people are watching you. How to deal with social anxiety or reservedness or nervousness around other people. And let me tell you, I've always been very nervous to perform for other people. Early in my life, because of my political drive, because I was uh, very much focused on nonprofit work and helping other people, I was early driven out into the spotlight. I had to, no matter what I wanted, stand up and talk in front of other people. I had to be an advocate. I had to speak out for others. I had to put myself in a position where other people were watching and listening to me and judging me for my behavior, my actions, how I dress, how I look, how I talk, and all those things. You know, the nerves I felt in those situations almost killed me. You know, I would be shaking, I would be literally shaking hours before, I would be shaking afterwards, I would freeze up during and before and after, I would... Uh, feel my nerves everywhere in my body, in my fingers, in my toes, in my legs, everywhere. And it was very hard to stay composed in those situations and to actually do it and actually go through with it. And that's why I always say YouTube was never easy for me. It never came naturally to me. It was a struggle. I made repeated attempts at launching myself as a YouTuber and to talk about things in video, but I withdrew and uh, withdrew myself from it multiple times because uh, I couldn't deal with the sensation of being seen and you know today that sensation is stronger than ever now I know that no matter what I'm doing no matter where I am there are people out there that are currently watching me or one of my videos somewhere in the world somebody is watching me or multiple people are watching me and that's a very very strange sensation and a very weird one and I want to talk about what got me here and why I do it and why I, how I manage it and yeah the question is can I really manage it it's never been a simple question because it's been difficult for me and it still is to some extent difficult for me to be in that situation now I want to say that throughout my life I've been kind of pulled between stages of extreme isolation, times where I was completely alone, years when I had no friends, years when I didn't really have anybody I felt I could talk to, times where I was so caught up in my own studies and uh, existential pursuits that I really didn't have anyone. and didn't have the energy to deal with anyone besides myself and uh, those questions that caught my mind, you know. I had times in my life where I was just writing and reading and writing and reading and that was all I did and that was all I cared to do. And uh, I had other times in my life when I was almost never alone and where I was constantly pushing myself to give to other people. Give, 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 give. Care, care, care. Do more, you're not doing enough. You have to give more, you have to take care of other people. If you're not gonna do it, other people are gonna get hurt and other people are gonna struggle. You have to push yourself every waking minute of your life. You have to push yourself to give more and to pour yourself into the projects and aspirations that you care about. And here I feel that I've been out and about through two extremes. But what really kept me in the spotlight, what kept me steady, was uh, my need for harmony. What I've come to notice is my need for harmony has become one of the biggest drives in myself and one of the key factors to why I'm a YouTuber. And it's a strange thought. Why would a need for harmony bring you out into YouTube? Why would you do YouTube because you need harmony and balance? For me it was always that if I knew that other people were struggling, I knew I couldn't stay silent. If I knew that other people were experiencing conflict and struggle and issues, I knew I couldn't be quiet. And that's why often true days when I experience creative drought and I have no ideas, it is by listening to other people and hearing about their struggles that I'm once again drawn to make a video. 
I hear a problem, I hear an issue, I see somebody go through something difficult and my first thought is I want to make a video to address that and that's why I always say most of my videos are made to help support other people and that's often why I ask you guys for comments and for help and for feedback on everything I do and that's why I have an active community where people can discuss their ideas and lifestyles and struggles because it is true that uh, anger and frustration I can feel, you know, when people are going through difficult situations, that I get creative fire and the uh, desire to address these issues and help others. And so why, I, why am I on YouTube? And that is because if I stood silent and if I just focused on my own place of mind and my own theories and my own insights, I would not be helping anyone and I would be sitting here knowing that other people are going through difficult situations out there and knowing that other people are experiencing conflicts and struggles in relationships and at work and that I'm not doing anything to make it better and I feel that disharmony very very strongly in my entire body I feel when there is conflict or tension around me and that's Something I've noticed at work as well as in my personal life. I cannot deal with the fact that other people around me are unhappy or in pain. And I, when that happens, I'm so, I almost panic, you know. It's, uh, uh, my whole body goes into action mode. I have to do something, I have to do something. And, you know, it's only through meditation and balance techniques that I can actually stay calm and can stay okay and can keep a steady head as I know these things. So I've often been drawn to having a nurturing role in relationships and I've often been the counselor of my friends, you know, the person people can talk to, the person that people can open up to. The first priority I have when I new meet a new person is make them feel that they can relax, make them feel that they can open up, make them know that I can be confided in and uh, so I become very very aware of my energy and the energy of other people I feel extremely in tune with like a kind of uh, in my own head spiritual force that exceeds and stretches beyond me into everyone I know and everyone I meet and everyone I see and hear about I feel <laughs> other people's energy as my own and I feel when other people are going through difficult times and when other people are tense and upset and uh, I know that most of the time there is nothing I can do there is nothing I can do to make things better you know when a person is going through a difficult time often there is nothing we can say or do that will make a situation better but we can listen and uh, we can understand and I think perhaps being able to understand is one of the biggest things you know to be able to make another person feel understood Sometimes feeling understood can make up for all kinds of pain and can make all kinds of pain more bearable. Pain that we don't understand, pain that we feel we should not have, pain that we feel is wrong to experience, that kind of pain can truly kill a person. But the pain we feel that we can understand and that we can see is normal and can feel is natural and can feel other people understand and have felt too. That pain is strangely bearable. So my question of today's video was what can an introvert do to deal with the spotlight and to place themselves and stay in these situations? The first thing is find something you care about instead of being in the spotlight. If you don't naturally want to or crave to be in the spotlight, find something else that you truly care about and that needs to be put into the spotlight and that needs to be seen and heard by other people. Make sure you know, and you know I've gone through struggles about this on YouTube, that the things you do are important and that they matter and that they need to be heard by others. And if you struggle with your energy and with your nerves when you are around by a, surrounded by other people and when you know that other people are watching, just place your focus on the content that you seek to share and work on that content until you feel truly confident in the value and worth of this material. Know that this is important, know it inside and out 
replace stage presence with confidence in the insights that you seek to share and the ideas and beliefs that you care about the most. And you know, let the content speak for itself. You know, if it is truly original content, if it is truly good content, it will become bigger than you and bigger than your natural energy on camera or your natural vibe around other people or your ability to speak. You know, I was not gifted with a great voice. I was not gifted with uh, great looks or with uh, something that would truly radiate through people no matter what I said. So I had to make up for it by actually studying what I do and actually digging deeper into something and finding something to say that made a genuine difference. And you know, there's millions of videos and content and articles out there talking about different personality types. And that's why I want to say, that's why I want to talk about originality. I feel as intuitives, we need to take some degree of energy from originality and defiance and rebellion, a healthy amount of rebellion, a healthy amount of questions, a healthy amount of independence. We need originality and we need rebellion to truly also establish the worth of our content. We cannot just blindly repeat what we have read elsewhere. We cannot just echo out in other videos what we've already heard other people say is elsewhere. We have to say something unique and here's the positive news. 99% of all the content out there is repetitive and redundant. You know, it's been said a million times over and over. Most people who deal with MBTI are simply trying to blindly categorize different personality types by loose traits and skill sets that often are fluid and a lot more deep and a lot more complicated than what people portray them on on the internet. So a person that can truly see past this and can see context in personality will do a lot better on YouTube and on the internet with their articles and with their content than all those established uh, theorists out there that are still grinding through the same type descriptions and type definitions and cognitive function semantics. So no matter what, no matter if you're trying to start a YouTube channel or if you're trying to become a public speaker or if you're a writer that wants to go out and talk about your book, you know, no matter what you're trying to do and no matter what the content is about, find a niche, find something original to say, find something no person has said before and find something you care about more than you need for being in the spotlight or rather for your lack of a need of being in the spotlight. Thanks everyone for watching and I hope this video could help you. I hope to see you guys in the next video.